Hi everyone, it is Atia here at Booking It with Atia, and today we are going to do a book mail haul. Super excited about this, but first make sure that you are subscribed if you haven't already and to press the notification bell so you're notified every time I come out with a new video. Also, if you're looking to add to your cozy sweater collection, make sure to check out my Etsy shop, which is indeed linked below. And let's jump right into to it. Before I head into the book mail portion of this haul, I do want to unbox a book box that I am a subscriber of. So this, this is upside down. This is the Read Her book box, which is all about black indie romances. And I have no idea what is in this month's box. This is a bi-monthly book box. If you watched my last book unboxing, was it a book mail? I think it was just an unboxing, which you should totally go and do that. You will see this same company featured in that video as well. So this is the, I think October? Yeah, this is the October box for Read Her. Like I said, it's bi-monthly. Uh, so let us get into it. What does it say? Ooh, okay. Homecoming. <laughs> University of Read Her. I love that. This is actually very nice. Oh, I love that. I love the pink and black too. Again, I have no idea what's actually in this. I don't know how people do these like unboxings where they unbox four things in one video because my arm already hurts. Oh, I think this is a sweatshirt. t-shirt oh. <laughs> okay <laughs> it is a long sleeve t-shirt look at that y'all what and on the back it says empowered by books and sisterhood this is tough i love this oh i really love this and then it even has on the sleeve read her Oh, this, this is nice. Oh, that's good. That's, that's very good. I don't even know what the book is yet, but I think the favorite item of this box may just be that long sleeve t-shirt. We'll see. Okay. I'm trying to do it so that you and I both see what's in the box at the same time. What is this? Is this a mug? A tumbler? A water bottle? Yeah, it's a water bottle. Even comes with its own little straw. I love this whole University of Read Her. I love this so much. That is so fun. I love this. I really love this. This is great. I still use... Um, I think it was during one of the summer months from last year, we got a read her like coffee, iced coffee tumbler. It was clear. Um, I still use it to this day. I use that one and I also use the, you guys have probably seen it in vlogs of mine, but it's a glass, is it a mason jar? Maybe it is a mason jar. I don't know, but it's glass and it says, uh, it has their like, logo on it which is pretty cool Ooh, ooh, a free audiobook that's fun so we get a free audiobook of coming home a novella by kennedy ryan from audible which i will definitely be <laughs> using that because who doesn't love a free audiobook and then i think this is this a snack some smart food sweet and salty kettle corn i didn't even know that was a flavor and i'm trying to see if there's anything else before i bring up the book i don't think so okay so what's the book oh wait what's this Ooh, a sticker so this is a sticker it says read her university reading for pleasure since 2021 
and yeah, okay. So now we have the book. This, Let Me Love You Better by Kaylin. So I'm guessing this is a college, yep, college romance. It says, NFL prospect Giles O'Brien is ready to forge his own path and make a name for himself. He's used to people giving in to his every demand and giving a middle finger to anybody who doesn't. Then he meets Devin Kincaid, an aspiring sports broadcaster who has an untimely run-in with Giles that jeopardizes her future. The solution rests jo solely on Giles, but kind gestures aren't in his repertoire. Insanely opposite, insanely opposite, yet similar in the ways that matter most, Giles makes the ultimate sacrifice to protect Devin, but will her heart see it that way? Is this like a fake dating situation? Oh, and then the, this is cool. So the chapter headers are football tickets. Oh, I'm lying. It's different for every chapter. So I guess this is Giles's chapter header and it's a football ticket. And then Devin's chapter header is a press identification badge. That's really cool. <laughs> That's really, really cool. I like that. All right, now let's move in to all the books that I was sent during the month of October by publishers. First up, we actually have the first book in a new cozy mystery series called Glory Be by Danielle Arsenault. And it says that it is a Glory Broussard mystery. So the main character's name is Glory. I'm really just in my cozy mystery bag the past two months and I am loving it. So the chance to get this into my hands and it's the start of a new cozy mystery series with a black female protagonist, I am all here for it. I don't even know the full premise besides the fact that it's giving cozy mystery vibes. Uh, it's set in the Louisiana Bayou, introducing a hilariously uncensored amateur sleuth. And yeah, let me just see like real quick what the actual mystery is. Oh goodness. <laughs> Whoa, okay. So, Glory, and usually with a, a cozy mystery series, the sleuth in that first book is somehow pulled into it because of personal relations. So, either they are in danger of being accused for the murder, or it's like someone kind of close to them. For this one, it's the latter. Lori's best friend is murdered in her apartment, and she's a nun that's beloved by the community. And the police declare the mysterious death a suicide, but Glory's like, nah, something seems suspicious. So Glory and her daughter are actually going to team up and solve this. And this is interesting because when we have cozy mystery series, usually, or a lot of them, I should say, follow young amateur, amateur sleuths, so I'm talking like mid to late 20s into like mid to late 30s, but this is actually an older black woman because it says that as a black woman of a certain age who grew up in a segregated Louisiana, so she's not like 40, you know what I'm saying? So that's also a pretty cool, interesting representation, and thank you to not me not being able to find who the publisher is, Pegasus Crime for a copy of Glory Be. And I just realized that I did not organize these books by publisher, but it also just so happens that I don't have any repeat publishers, so it works out just fine. The next book we have is Black Girl, You Are Atlas by Renee Watson, and we have Fine Art fine art by Akua Holmes and I believe this is poetry and art all about blackness and black girlhood and black sisterhood. So it says in this semi-autobiographical collection of poems Renee Watson writes about her experience growing up at the intersections of race, class, and gender. Using a mixture of poetic forms from haiku to free verse Watson shares recollections of her childhood in Portland tender odes to the black women in her life and urgent calls for black girls to step into their power. I also just think it's a really fun cover as well. And I'll show you some of the 
art that's in here. Now, this is an advanced reader copy, so I don't know if in the finished book the designs will be in color. But even if they aren't, they're pretty cool in black and white, too. And thank you to Penguin Teen for a copy of Black Girl, You Are Atlas. Next up, we have a book by a Black indie author that I have been highly, highly, highly anticipating. This is an advanced reader copy, but the finished copy is actually already out, and I will link where you can get this book down below, and that is Sister Samurai by Tatiana Obey, who is the author of... Bones to the Wind and Dragging Your Bones, which I read, I believe, last year and absolutely loved. This is giving black female samurai warrior richness vibes, and we just love to see it. Also, look at this cover. So I'll read you some of the back, and it says, This is no revenge story. I get... I ain't got time for that. I've got errands to run and things to do and barely enough time to make it home before sundown. I don't care why folks are going around stealing ink. I don't care why the monks are acting kind of strange. I don't care that everybody is expecting me to save them. I might be a sister samurai, but those days playing hero were back when my knees didn't ache and I wasn't the only one left. So leave me alone. All I want to do is get home, drink some green tea lemonade, and enjoy my peace. I'm not asking for much, so why are all these demons daring to get in my way? I am not the one. Not today. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, I hadn't read it yet. I started it, but I have not finished. And I'm already telling you, just go buy your copy. And while you're buying your copy of Sissa Samurai, go buy your copy of Bones to the Wind and Dragging Your Bones by Tatiana Obey. And this actually came directly from the author, so shout out to you, Tatiana. Thank you. Next up, we have Hookshot by Kennedy Ryan. Big shout out and thank you to Sourcebooks for this. This is, I believe, the second book in the Hoops series by this author, and this is the traditionally published cover. So a lot of Kennedy Ryan's books were previously independent published previously independently published and since the release and massive success of Before I Let Go, a lot of them are being picked up by traditional publishers. I believe it's I think it's both Source and Forever Books. And so they're getting redesigned covers. And I just realized that this has a sticker. And it says, no one has to tell a queen to wear her crown. I love that. I need to find some place to put that. So yeah, we have a single divorced dad in the final years of his basketball career. And... At 25, Lotus is finally living out her dream, and she's on the fashion scene. So this is actually an age gap romance. We have a single parent, and we also have the trope of one of our protagonists is a parent, and the other is not. I've only ever read Before I Let Go by Kennedy Ryan, but just based on that one, I know that this is going to be chock full of intense character work and, like, amazing character growth so i'm looking forward to this and as you know it's a little bit of a thick one too so i'm hoping that the uh page amount lives up to what it's supposed to be because this beauty is about 420 pages <laughs> and it's a romance so once again thank you to the publisher for hookshot by kennedy ryan Next up from atria books we have what we kept to ourselves by nancy juyun kim and this is actually the author of The Last Story of Mina Lee. It's a pretty cool. I'm trying to get it so you can really see the cover. Uh, I don't really know what this one's about, honestly. So I am... Time jump. I am going to read it to you. It says, 1999, the Kim family is struggling to move on after their money... After their mother, Sunny, vanished a year ago. 61-year-old John Kim feels more isolated from his grown children, Anastasia and Ronald, than ever before. But one evening, their fragile lives are further upended when John finds the body of a stranger in their backyard. The man was carrying a letter to Sonny, which leaves the family with more questions than ever about their mother and her life outside home. 1977 
Sunny is pregnant and has just moved to Los Angeles from Korea with her always working and often absent husband. America is not turning out the way she had dreamed it to be, and the loneliness and isolation are broken only by a fateful encounter at a bus stop. The unexpected connection spans the decades and echoes into the family's lives in the present as they uncover devastating secrets that put not only everything they thought they knew about their mother, but their very lives at risk. Okay. We love um, alternating timeline and also messy family dynamics. And there's a little bit of a mystery because the mom disappeared a year ago. Next up, we have Redwood Court by Delana R.A. Dameron. And this is was sent to me by The Dial Press. I am absolutely in love with this cover. Look at that. Look at that. All right, so this is a breathtaking debut about one unforgettable Southern Black family seen through the eyes of its youngest daughter as she comes of age in the 1990s. Okay, I was really expecting the synopsis to be on the back of this book, and it just was not. The baby of the family, Mika Tabor, spends much of her time in the care of loved ones, listening to their stories and witnessing their struggles. On Redwood Court, the cul-de-sac in an all-black working-class suburb of Columbia, South Carolina, where her grandparents live, Mika learns important lessons from the people who raise her. Her exhausted parents, who work long hours at multiple jobs while still making sure their kids will experience the adventure of family vacations. Her older sister, who in a house filled with Motown would rather listen to Alanis Morissette, her retired grandparents, children of Jim Crow, who realized their own vision of success when they bought their house on the court in 1960s, imagining it filled with future generations, and the many neighbors who hold tight to the community they've built, committed to fostering joy and love in an America insistent on seeing black people stumble and fall. With visceral clarity, and powerful prose, Delana R.A. Dameron reveals the devastation of being made to feel invisible and the transformative power of being seen. Redwood Court is a celebration of extraordinary, ordinary people striving to achieve their own American dreams. Okay, that, that sounds... Bookmail hauls are so, for lack of a better word, dangerous because when these books come in, I usually set them aside in a bag until the end of the month when I'm ready to record. And then when I'm recording, I'm reading the synopsis or sometimes rereading the synopsis. And I'm like, I want to read this now. Next up, just to, you know, mix things up a bit, we have a nonfiction book and this is... White Supremacy is All Around, Notes from a Black Disabled Woman in a White World. And this is by Dr. Akila Cadet, founder and CEO of Change Cadet. All right. So it says, founder and CEO of consulting firm Change Cadet, Dr. Akila Cadet shares a powerful, incisive look at where we stand in the fight to dismantle white supremacy and what we urgently need to do next. White supremacy is all around arise at the as the U.S.'s ongoing racial reckoning has left readers searching for voices they can trust. BIPOC, disabled people, and other disenfranchised Americans want to feel heard and empowered. Organization leaders and allies invested in dismantling white supremacy want a framework for how best to con contribute. Dr. Akila Cadet speaks to all these needs, drawing from her life experiences and work to offer an informed perspective that prioritizes belonging. From people to leading brands who seek to build inclusive and equitable cultures. 
and a series of personal stories told with her trademark candor and wit, Dr. Cadet explores the long-term work required to combat structural oppression from her unique vantage point as a Black disabled woman. She tackles everything from the 2020 summer of allyship and depression caused by workplace discrimination to navigating disability and building a consulting business, all with a little inspo from Beyonce. A powerful call for true accompliceship for non-Black and non-disabled people to continually learn and unlearn and a way for Black and disabled people to see and celebrate themselves White supremacy is all around, ushers in a new voice that is timely, urgent, and essential, and a vision we all need now. And thank you to Hatchet Books. Next up, we have The List by Yomi Adagoke, and this is a thriller. I think it's a psychological thriller. Maybe not psychological, but I know it's a thriller that follows a black woman who thinks she has it all. Everything's going the way she wants it. She is engaged to, uh, she's engaged to this man. She's a successful, like high profile journalist, very much online. She's engaged to this man. Um, and I think it's about a month out from the wedding. She wakes up from a text from one of her best friends who's like, have you seen this list? And it is a list of prominent men who have been accused of a sexual assault and her fiance's name is on that list and so now she's like what because previously she you know when a list like this would come out she would go all in and be like denouncing these men left right and center but now her man is on one of the list and from what i've heard it's good it's messy and it's fast paced and i cannot wait to read it and thank you, William and Morrow Books, for the finished copy. All right, last book, and one that I literally screamed when I opened this package. And it is The Reformatory by Tanana Reeve Dew. Um, if you don't know who T T Tanana Reeve Dew is, I think, honestly, I kind of just want to say, like, the Black Mother of Horror, like, or the Mother of Black Horror, or like just the mother of horror well i guess that was kind of mary shelley i'll give mary shelley her her coins i'll i'll give that to her uh but in terms of modern it's miss do right here have i read a book of hers yet no this will probably be the one that i start with this or the good house um but am i just collecting her books also yes I put her up there with Octavia Butler and N.K. Jemison, where it's just, they are known for revolutionizing the genre that they're in. And so for me, I know their books are going to be a hit. I know this. So my normal rule of, oh, I'm going to read one book of theirs and then see and then start collecting them. Like that just, I don't abide by that rule for certain authors. Um, also, Nettie Okorafor is one of those for sci-fi. I'm pretty sure I had all of her books before <laughs> I had it read, like, two of them. Uh, N.K. Jemison is another one for me. Octavia E. Butler. I had all of Octavia E. Butler's books before I had read a single one. Yep. Do I regret that decision? No. Not even a little bit. Will I regret that decision with Miss Tanana Reeve do? No, I won't. What is this about? Um, I don't want to read the synopsis because I don't want to ruin anything. But I did hear her talk at New York Comic Con last month. So I'm going to try and just go off of what I remember from that talk. And basically, this is based off of or inspired by the Reform School back in... Is it the 1960s? I want to say it's the 1960s. 1950s, right? This is based off the same school that Colson Whitehead's book Nickel Boys is based off of. Um, and there was a 
scandal, a tragedy that happened where the young black boys, on top of being abused and mistreated in life, were then discarded and forgotten in death as well at this reform school. And that tragedy did not come out until several years there's that. So all I know about the reformatory is that, well, reform school, black boys, a haunted house, I'm pretty sure. Like, I've heard that she does haunted house horror stories really well. That's why I want you to either start with this one or The Good House by her. Um, but yeah, I mean, I am just... <sighs> The amount of self-control I've held onto because I wanted to read this the moment I got it in my hands. And I was like, nope, I am not going to completely throw off my reading plans for the month of October. I am not going to completely throw off what I need to read for certain projects. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I am going to at least wait until I have recorded my October book mail video. And look at that, here we are. And I think, I think I just convinced myself to do a reading vlog about this. Huh, would you look at that? And thank you, Saga Press, for holding it down and sending me a finished copy. Y'all are a real one for that. All right, y'all, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Comment down below what are some new bookish acquirements to your collection, either purchased or borrowed or even gifted, right? We love a good book gift. Make sure that you are subscribed and that you've clicked the notification bell so you're notified every time I come out with a new video. Follow me on all of my socials and make sure to check out my Etsy shop. You can also join my book club down below are all of these wonderful, wonderful links. And I will see you in the next video. Bye. Showing. I ain't living for the moment. I see what's mine and I want it. Hungry like a Pac-Man. I'm Bruce Wayne and Batman. I'm Naruto with a Hanzo. Got a sharp mind like I'm Einstein. Put some copyright so it's all mine. Check it for me. I'm in the sky.